One of the most powerful tools in modern number theory is something called the Chinese remainder theorem, and this originates from something known as the Chinese remainder problem. This actually appears in the 3rd century AD. The Chinese mathematician Sun Xi posed and solved the following problem. Suppose I have a set of things. If I count them by threes, two remained. If I count them by fives, three remain. If I count them by sevens, two remain. And the question is, how many things are there? And because of its origin in an ancient Chinese text, this type of problem has become known as the Chinese remainder problem. And this type of problem actually appears quite often in calendar problems. For example, when is the next time my birthday is going to fall on the Friday of a leap year? Now the solution to the Chinese remainder problem is based on the following key insight. Suppose I have a number and I have my divisors d1, d2, d3, and so on. And suppose that when I divide n by each of these, I get my remainders r1, r2, r3, and so on respectively. In other words, when I divide n by d1, I get remainder r1. When I divide n by d2, I get remainder r2, and so on. Now it turns out that if I have n plus the product of all of these divisors, then I'm going to get the same remainders as I had before. So if I take this new number and divide it by d1, I'm going to get the same remainder r1. You should prove this. And so this leads to the following method of solving the Chinese remainder type problems. So for each divisor, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a product of all the other divisors. I'm going to then take a multiple of this product that meet whatever the requirements are. So this divisor I've isolated, I want to have a certain remainder when I use that, and so I want to find a multiple of this product that has that remainder. And I'm going to do this for each divisor, so I'm going to get a whole bunch of these products, and I'll add these products together. And once I get this number, I might be able to reduce it by subtracting the product of all of the divisors. So let's take a look at Sun Xi's problem again. So there's three divisors and three remainders. So if the items are counted by threes, then two remain. Well, what that says is that if I take whatever the number is and divide it by three, I get a remainder of two. If counted by fives, three remain. Well, that says that if I divide by 5, then my remainder is going to be 3. If counted by 7s, 2 remain. If I divide by 7, then I have two things left over. So we're going to go through each of the divisors. So we'll pick one of the divisors to start with. For example, I'll pick the divisor 3. And I want to find the multiple of the other two. 5 times 7 is 35, and I want to find a multiple of 35 that solves the requirement of this first divisor, which is if I divide it by 3, I'm going to have a remainder of 2. And in this case, we're lucky because 5 times 7 is 35 does in fact have remainder 2 when divided by 3. So we'll write that down. 35 solves the first requirement. Now let's go on to the next divisor, 5, and the product of the other two divisors, 3 times 7 is 21, and I want to look for a multiple of 21 that solves the second requirement. Again, a multiple of 21 that leaves remainder 3 when divided by 5. Well, 21 doesn't work. 2 times 21 is 42, divided by 5 doesn't leave remainder 3. 3 times 21, 63, does in fact leave remainder 3 when divided by 5. So I'll note that 63 solves my second requirement. And let's take a look at that last divisor, 7, and I want to find a multiple of the other two divisors, 3 and 5, 15. I want to find a multiple of 15 that leaves a remainder of 2 when divided by 7. So again, 15 doesn't work. 2 times 15, 30, does work because 30 has remainder 2 when divided by 7, so 30 is a number that's going to solve our third requirement. One solution we can find by adding all three numbers together, 35 plus 63 plus 30, that's 128, but we can also find smaller solutions by subtracting the product of all of the divisors, 3, 5, and 7. 
3 times 5 times 7 is 105, so I can subtract 105 to find a smaller solution. And in fact, the smallest positive solution is going to be 128 minus 105 is equal to 23. Now, the Chinese version of the Chinese remainder problem involves divisors and remainders, but we can modernize the uh, version of this problem. Remember that n is congruent to r mod d if r is the remainder when n is divided by d. And so that means the Chinese remainder problem is equivalent to solving a system of linear congruences. So this first requirement, when counted by threes, to remain, that's the same as saying when n is divided by 3, the remainder is 2, n is congruent to 2 mod 3. When counted by 5s, 3 remain. Well, again, that means that when n is divided by 5, the remainder is 3, n is congruent to 3 mod 5. When counted by 7s, 2 remains. When n is divided by 7, the remainder is 2, and so n is congruent to 2 mod 7. And I'm looking for a number that solves all three congruences at the same time. And this is the modern statement of the Chinese remainder problem. The actual solution remains unchanged. What we do is we look for multiples of the other divisors, the other moduli, that solve the first congruence, and we find solutions in this way to all of them, add them, and then subtract the product of all of the divisors, all of the moduli.